Oh uh, shit. And hello, back chat. in the hello, past, chat. hello chat. Back in the going? past, he meets with uh, Freezer's like ancestor, and he sees that his ancestor are a piece of shit, like Freezer's ancestor. Oh, it's and a he gets super story. angry. He turns right. into Super Saiyan. And then he served as vice president under Obama, and now he's president. <laughs> he turns to Versailles he traumatizes wow. like the uh, Freezer Sons or something. I'm beginning to that Dragon Ball Z doesn't have very much artistic merit. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. So good. We are getting set up, everybody. Hello. Welcome to the mic check for uh, the wrong podcast. Let's see. Let's put that yes. other one up. Hello, hello everybody. We are now. You can hear us, correct? Hello. Yes, we, we we got it. We got it. It's coming. Wait, they didn't hear me when I was talking about Bardock. Do they, I have to repeat myself no, again? They no. Definitely heard that. I just switched they to them. Heard that. That. Let me tell you, he's not <laughs> red yeah. because he's soaked by his with the blood of his camera. Unfortunately, this says chat. So, okay. Uh, okay. Um, I think we are good. Did you tweet I didn't tweet, but I mean everything else is you good. Have the rundown, the rundown, the run I got the rundown. Run okay, so I have, have the rundown. I have stream elements open. The rundown is actually not loading for me. Let me let me refresh here. Let's see if that's gonna see. work. See if that's gonna work. You had the correct music. Uh, that's the wrong. No, that's the wrong music. See? Uh, <laughs> uh, what is the thing here? Oh. Next profile. Next profile. Hey. You guys hear me? Start cheering. You guys hear that? Yes. Yes. All right. Oh, oh, oh look at you. that. Um, podcast rundown is just completely frozen everything on my computer. So let's try that again. <laughs> just a Google Doc. I know. That's Not weird. Sign. There we go. Okay. It was it was just a bug. Just encountered a bit of a glitch. A bit of a Sorry. meep. <laughs> a bit of a meep. Okay, our, our glitches meeps. I'll have to ask her that. Um, oh, you gotta ask. Yeah, I'm sure she okay. knows what glitches are. Yes, I'm sure. That doesn't mean she can't have an opinion on it. Um, she will. Okay, so you've sure, done. You have about a lot of things. You <laughs> don't I don't know shit understand. about exactly. It's her dad's whole job. Um, okay, so yeah, there's that. I just have to hit record. I hit the music, and then I think we're good. Uh, anything? Oh no, we let's tweet. Let's tweet just right now. I tweeted. Uh, I have not. See, Mike is on his shit. Yeah. He knows. Yeah, he just shows up and looks pretty. That's all he has to do. He's a well oil machine. He did, well, he did the rundown, oh, too. And, uh, yes, very good He's at it. He's making Dr. Pepper? Whatever, whatever. What I flavor is pepper. that? Okay. Does Dr. Pepper has different flavors? Okay. I think we're good. I think we'll start. Let's start. But Thanks, Christian. Good luck. Bye, Christian. Thank you, Christian. <laughs> um, okay. Mike, I'll do a countdown. I'll hit record, and then it's all you. Ready? Sounds crazy. Okay. It's messed up. Uh, five, four, three. Hey, you guys hear me? Start cheering now. Yeah, yeah, let's get this over with. <laughs> woof woof. Hi, I'm Mike Minotti, and I am a Nintendog. Hi, I'm Jeff Grubb, and I am a Nintendog. And we are the last of the Nintendogs. Oh, Today, fast, fast. we are talking about other Nintendo franchises that deserve that Clovey... Clovey? 
forgotten <laughs> glow up. I want to say glow up. So somehow I, I got Kirby and glow up combined. Wow. Into glow up. Okay. I mean, Kirby could glow swallow up. anything if you really think like about it. So. Kirby is like the Zordo version of Kirby, right? Princess Zordo. Right. Uh, or Danky <laughs> King. Jeez. Dun yeah, Danky. Yes, yeah, Sanic. Yes, exactly. Yes. Uh, Jeff, how's it going? It's going pretty good. I, uh, Took my back yesterday, but it's it's better now. It's better now. I gotta be honest. It's, it's feeling That's much good. better. Um, I'm excited about that Rift Tracks game getting announced. I'm yeah. like very much wanting to go play um, the game it's based on. Uh, now I can't think of the name of that thing. But I'm gonna go. That everyone says like, oh, it's like a Rift Tracks game. And then the Rift Tracks people are like, it is. They should yes. just make a Rift Tracks game. Exactly. So and the Rift Tracks people just uh, DM me saying, thank you for covering it. So I'm gonna be like, give me a code. Can we play this thing now? Uh, so I'm I'm very excited. It's coming out in May. Uh, but. I want to get the community together and play a night of that. Um, what it's oh, called? What the dub? What the dub is what it's called? Yeah, everyone's so. much funnier I am than you. Yes, exactly. So that'll be very embarrassing for me, but I'm willing to put up with it because I'm just that much a fan of, of what they're doing there. Uh, that's coming to Switch too. That's pretty exciting. So I'm uh, looking forward to that. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, how about you, Mike? How are you doing? I'm good. I slept on my shoulder one night, and now that hurts forever. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. otherwise, you know, so we're old. But yes. Yeah. Things are good. I spent the last week playing Strangers of Par Paradise. Parish. For the pa Parish province, yes. Yes, that whole thing. And I was able, I was ha happy I was able to get that done over the weekend. So that went up on Monday morning. So you could check that out. But that is not a Nintendo game, Jeff. No. Uh, so hey, I want to answer Slane the Gossam's question. How does a Rift yeah. Tracks game work? Uh, I There is video of Giant Bomb playing What the Dub. So if you really want to see it, just go watch that. Google uh, What the Dub. Uh, it'll come up but um basically think about uh like a jackbox party game where everyone's connecting with their devices i believe and then uh they play a clip and then everyone has a chance to enter what they want uh to be the joke and then uh, the clip plays and it plays each each person's joke and then the clip plays it plays the next person's joke and it uses a uh, text-to-speech to translate your jokes and it's actually it works surprisingly well so i'm, I'm very excited about it and they're gonna like use actual riff tracks movies like movies they've gotten the rights to so um Roller Gator, which is just an insane movie if you've never seen it. It's like just someone playing the guitar the entire time and then a, a really cheap uh, puppet alligator. Well, you just go watch it. Um, they're, it's Honestly, they play it on Rift Tracks on uh, a Twitch all the time, so really go watch it. And they got Plan 9 from Outer Space and stuff like that, so they're getting some cool clips in there. I'm very excited about it. Jeff, we got this super chat from Xbox Lost PlayStation 1. I want to do this. Like, I didn't want to ask you about the series. Excuse yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Chris, the phrasing is incredible. He says, ha, 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 Xbox games in development hell. Wait for next year in all caps. <laughs> and then the crying, laughing uh, emoji. Jeff, this is talking about the, uh, the the report from Video Game Chronicle, Video, Video Games Chronicle about uh, a heavy turnover at the initiative, which is working on Perfect, Perfect Dark. Dark. You've been yep. talking a lot about how there's been a lot of turnover in general. I wondered if you had a take on this. Yeah, I'm, I'm like looking into it. I, this is probably slightly higher turnover than than what is like uh, average for the industry right now. But still, there's a lot of turnover period. My, my, my guess is that I mean, even the story itself wasn't sure if it's like this was turnover because um, things are falling apart. They like got some people who like guessed at that. Like the quotes were like, we think that's what's happening. And um, and but, you know, even OK, even if that's what's happening, like it, it does seem like it's a, at a point where a lot of the day-to-day -day development is moving to Crystal Dynamics anyhow. And if you're someone who just got done, like, setting things up for where this game is headed next, uh, and now you're, like, sort of wondering, like, okay, where am I, where's my next work going to come from inside the studio? Oh, well, I can go somewhere else and either start my own studio or get paid more to go somewhere else. Like, people are just going to up and leave. This is happening all over the industry. I would like to see, like, a comparison between the uh, the exits at, at uh, uh, the initiative... And they've been hiring too. There was a list of like new hires there as well that have been happening just in like the last two months. But the people that have left and like compare that to other studios and say, see how much turnover is pretty normal right now. It's just, it is wild. Like the, the labor market is so tight. It's really hard to, to, to hire people. And if you are one of these people, now's the time to go get paid by moving jobs really frequently. Like every couple of months, like people are going to be moving jobs because they can get paid more and more and more. And, you know, that's not going to be true for forever. So now's the time to move. Yeah. Um, gosh, it is. It is. I guess kind of a bad look because of all that quadruple A talk that they oh, had. Oh yes, which That's, I mean it was yes. always it was always a marketing thing. Anyways, like we even I, I always said even just because they're saying that doesn't mean that we need to believe it, right? <laughs> yes. 
Uh, yes, I in, mean, they, they've like, there's like, they don't even have like 50 employees, right? Or whatever it was, or like, and maybe, maybe they said there was like 34 people who've left recently or something like that. And that was like half. So like, maybe they have like 70 employees. Like the initiative was never big. It's always been this kind of this small team. And that's one of the reasons they brought in Crystal Dynamics. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm like asking around for more information uh, to see like kind of where it's at. I, I, I'm like hesitant to believe that this is like, um, a five alarm fire over there but also making games is hard and maybe things are just especially hard on this project right now i mean that's well, that wouldn't surprise me at all xbox lost playstation one gave us more money and with <laughs> atrocious spacing said scrub said fable <laughs> perfect dark in a vowed uh with 2023 these never come out the, these never coming out all right it's one word please uh okay fair enough we'll see Yes. Oh, uh, did you even ever say those things about? I mean, I said that the internal target for all of those things oh, yeah. were 2023. Like that's and that's yeah. that was true oh, okay. at the time. Yeah, Inter well, video games never get delayed. Oh, wait, he's back. Man, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, he says, quit the damage control. You said Xbox E3 will be big. <laughs> well, why wouldn't it also still be big? Like they still are going to market. Well, they're not going to have perfect darkness, and now it's they a don't flop. Jeff. Release games at E3. They promote games at E3. They don't have to be finished to talk about that. Whatever. I, I love this guy. Xbox lost PlayStation One. Your money is very valuable to me. I'm. We're almost at. You know, like you've almost spent enough for me to buy a burrito. So I'm very Sweet. thankful to you. That sounds pretty good. I think I am going to Chipotle later. All right, so let's well, let's get to talking about Nintendo. <laughs> if anybody wants to give us more money and yell at us, uh, Jeff, Su Super Nintendo World is going to be opening in the U.S. at Ho Universal Studios Hollywood sometime in 2023. This is the uh, Nintendo themed land, and by Nintendo themed we mean Mario themed land that is opening up at Universal theme parks around the world. It's already in Japan. This will be the second one. Uh, people are excited about this. I, it is worth noting that this is going to be the smallest version of this. Yeah. This one is basic. In terms of rides, it's only going to have the Mario Kart ride. It's still going to have, like, the Toad Cafe, I think, and some of those other, like, fun things. Yeah. But um, the one that they're building in Orlando, which construction's finally, like, really moving ahead on, and the third theme park they're building there, uh, Universal Epic Universe, that's going to be the one that's going to have the Mario Kart ride, the Yoshi, like slow moving kind of family ride, and the Donkey Kong Country roller coaster. But that's not, that's years away. Yeah. Um, I am excited. I am going to probably end up waiting, like, for the family trip for the Orlando one. Um, uh, we talked a little bit about this on Games Beat Decides, but it's like, I, I, I do want that full experience. And it's like, if I happen to find myself in, California near there, uh, near the, the the Hollywood location. I will probably go by myself if I'm like there for work or something like that. But um, like actually like lugging the entire family on an airplane to go do something like this. Uh, that uh, means yeah. you should go for work. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows? Who knows why we would be out there? I mean, there, but, if we had to go to LA for some reason, Jeff, I'd be like, come on, let's go a few days early and check out Nintendo. Absolutely, World. yes. It'll be work related. Yeah, we could actually probably even like find ways to write some of it off and stuff. So yeah um yeah that we, uh, we will we will figure that out if like it gets to that point I, i'm like excited that things seem to be getting back on schedule though um yeah. we do i mean there's lots of reasons to be for uncertainty i think most companies recognize that they need to just bake that uncertainty into their future plans but also derailing everything because the the pandemic might flare up again at any moment uh like okay yeah it's gonna flare up but as we saw with omicron it's also gonna flare back down and as soon as it flares back down, people are going to be ready for everything. They're just like, I mean, I've been like looking around the world as I go out these last few weeks. And it's just like everyone is ready to go back to normal 100 yeah. percent. And it's like um, the companies that are offering up stuff to do to the, to that to this audience is are they're you know getting a windfall right now. So, um, you know, it was probably the right move at the time with all that uncertainty early on to sort of delay a lot of these things. But now getting back on track is very exciting. Uh, Jeff, we talked about this on Game Beat Side, but I did want to bring up that, yeah, Advanced Wars 1 plus 2 Reboot Camp got delayed in light of the recent uh, world events happening in the Ukraine. This happened kind of after our show last week, but technically still the biggest Nintendo news that actually happened this week, so I did want to mention it here. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, this. what else were they going to do? It's, a, it's a, The game is about what it is about, and... Uh... I, I would love if it got like another date, but I also get that they're just going to kind of wait until they can find a spot for it. I wonder if it comes out this holiday instead. Here's my question for you about this. You talk a lot about how Nintendo has certain games that are just done. Yes. 
they can come out whenever. Things like in the past, it was like Paper Mario and Pikmin 3. You, you've suggested maybe like the Wind Waker or Twilight Princess is, is in a similar situation. Maybe yes. Metroid Prime also. Probably Do you think any close, of those yeah. are getting moved up now to kind of good point. make up for losing this? Yeah, so uh, this game was always coming after the end of this fiscal year, so it's like it has more room to, to maneuver and wiggle around. But if they want to like hold it off for like an entire year, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they like, yeah, start moving one or two of those up to like uh, to fill that in and fill in that gap of, of revenue. I think at the same time, they're in a strong situation where they already have a lot of games coming. They do. They have like not just one a month, but like, you know, 1.5 average per month. And most of those games seem to be like they're going to sell as well, if not better than Advance Wars. So um, they're probably OK in terms of this won't be too much of a hit. But uh, I, I think you're right that they have that flexibility if they if they so choose to act on it. I don't know how Nintendo calculates that, though, and if they are the, how they decide, like, we move this later. Let's move one of these up. I, I think the reasons that they hold on these things is for um, uh, lining up marketing resources and lining up things that make sense so that, like, when you are putting out a Zelda thing, maybe it can lead into the next big new Zelda thing and that sort of thing. Um, this is, It's probably not to be like, oh, we're, we're breaking glass in case of emergency. That's I don't actually think it's how they, they treat these things. But they could, and they could here, but I don't know if, if they will. I just want you to tell me I'm getting those games that I want finally. I, I mean, you are those, those most of those games have to be coming very soon. I mean, God, Wind Waker Twilight Princess better come out this year for sure. I, yeah, I would hope I would hope that would come out like maybe late summer. But yeah, who knows? Who knows? At this point. Um, all right, Jeff. Uh, hey, Kirby 30th Anniversary Music Fest was announced. It's going to happen on August 11th. Oh, that's going to be three days after my colonoscopy. Good. I'll be ready for that. <laughs> so it's going to be streaming uh, for free. So, Jeff, I love these kind of uh, big anniversary concert Same. things. Kirby has a, a lot of very good music. This will be fun to us, too. I don't sometimes we get like announcements at these things. I don't know if there's going to be much to announce considering Kirby's like biggest game maybe ever will have come out already a few months before that. But still, this should be exciting. Yeah, I uh there was a 25th anniversary Kirby concert and they shared a clip of that and I was watching that and I'm like, man, this music is so good and it's cool to see a real orchestra playing it and uh yeah, it's been in my head ever since I watched that. I this yeah, free live streaming concerts uh to celebrate old video game franchises. What a concept. Like, yeah, just keep keep more of that coming. I will tune in. The Sonic concert still probably is the GOAT. The uh, Undertale right. one for its 10th anniversary not too long ago was also very good. Yeah, these things are always fantastic. Yes, I agree. All right, All right Jeff. Uh, so, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Cowbunga Collection, is coming to Switch, too, even though it was <laughs> announced at the State of Play, as are a bunch of the other games that were yes. announced at the State of Play. Uh, I guess first off here, I'm Jeff, I'm so excited about the Cowbunga Collection. Me, too. I, I keep getting more and more excited about it. It's... um. I'm like, I, I I just want to play through the arcade game first. I'll do that first. And then I'm going to dive into all the other ones. Uh, at least, um, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll probably mess around with the original NES game a little bit, but I never played the yeah. Manhattan Project all that much. Oh, and man, the more I, great. the more I look at it, I'm like, this looks really fun. So I, uh, I'm i I'm excited, like, just kind of start there probably and start moving my way forward in the, throughout that franchise. My, uh, you know, that channel I talk about, You Can Beat Video Games, he does, like, those detailed video guides. The last one he did, like, it was the Lewis one when this got announced was for the Manhattan Project. So that works out pretty well. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. But gosh, that Turtles on Time, Hyperstone Heist. Uh, yeah. Th there's a lot of exciting stuff here in those Game Boy games. I want to play those. But Jeff, Jeff what do you think about the fact that so many of these uh, state of play games yeah. are just multi platform? Because I mean, it's a lot of third party stuff. So of course, a lot of it's going to be multi platform. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it was, it's a little bit strange. Like it was just the, the, the sheer amount. Like the sheer the sheer percentage of the state of play uh and how much of that was okay and this is also coming to switch and xbox and some of these are like xbox game pass day and date games i'm like okay well that's especially weird um but it's like yeah the, the this cowabunga collection they can put it in the state of play all they want it's gonna sp sell best on switch it's gonna <laughs> sell best on switch it's like it's going to be a nintendo switch game going forward so it, it, it the way the way these things like line up and i, I mean I don't necessarily get it. I don't necessarily get like what that state of play was all about with when so much of this, I mean, other than it's like oh, living up to agreements to partners. Right. Exactly. Um, and now we're getting this, this Hogwarts state of play coming up soon. It's like, man, I kind of yeah. think maybe you should have just mashed them together. Right. You should just mash them together and kind of made it more worth our while. If this Hogwarts, maybe this Hogwarts one will be boring too. Who knows? So, 
Yeah, it I is kind of weird. I mean, so how long is this Hogwarts one going to be? Because the other one was pretty short. Yeah. And if it had ended with, you know, oh, look, that Hogwarts game is back. Right. Why have you been asking where that is? That probably would have helped them a lot. Right. You could do like a solid 15, 20 minutes on the long end just dedicated to Hogwarts and made that what like a total of 35 to 40 minutes stay to play. That's still very acceptable. And, um, you know, it's a big game people have been asking about. We know that. I like to ask about it uh, in our chat all the time. So it's so. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I got. I just it feels like you should have this thing that anchors all these other things, and it's kind of like okay, now we know there's a big game that has this broad appeal, and it will spring it all, spring all these other things alongside it. I don't know, whatever. All I know is I'm glad something like the Cowabunga Collection is coming along, coming out for Switch, and those other games that I I'm not sure about. I'm also glad most of them are coming to Switch. Not all of them are, but so many of them are, and I'll try them out there because it's like the, none of them seem too graphically intense. So I'm, I'm glad we have that option. Jeff, I I feel like I shouldn't encourage it, but he keeps sending us money. No, if he I gives us he, money, encourage. Once think, he starts I chatting think, without money, that's when yeah. he gets banned. Well, so well, yeah, yeah. Well, play, yeah. PlayStation lost Xbox One or what, whatever his name was. I think he got banned. Yes, but he's he did. Back on Killer of Xbox now, which I think was his original. And he says, "Talk Xbox we Perfect did. Dark. Xbox gives you the best. Rare three four three. Uh, whatever Ti is, you the ducking? Initiative. How are we ducking? Yeah, we but, are but, reading everything he sends us. <laughs> also, like, it could be a mess. Yeah, I mean, that was a lot of people to leave a studio. It, it is. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's a problem every studio is dealing with. But yeah, uh, fair enough. I mean, we've seen what of Perfect Dark. We saw we saw the teaser, and that's yeah. it. Have we seen anything else since? No. Uh, so it's like, yeah. what? Like, I, honestly, I I don't know if anyone should have their hopes up at all for that game until they've proven themselves. I think that's totally fine. Whatever. I mean. I mean yeah, why well, get your hopes up about about it anyways? It's from exactly one it's one studio who's new, another studio whose last game was the Avengers, Avengers right? And the last Perfect Dark game, which came out like what 10, 20, 15 years ago, twenty wasn't years very ago, good. yeah, twenty yeah. years ago, Jesus. So sure, like yeah, okay. <laughs> what, yeah. yeah Perfect that, Dark <laughs> might not be very good. Yeah, surprise! <laughs> like, I don't give a shit about Perfect Dark all that much. Like yeah, like they have to prove it's actually going to be some good uh, or it, it, it like worth worthy of our time. Uh, I get that it seems like they are putting pieces in the place to, like, to prove that they care about it, but uh, I'm not convinced yet until I see at least a gameplay trailer. I mean, that's true with all these games. Like, um, I, I, and if uh, uh, I think that's the right position to have. A lot of people want to be like, and now here's why I'm so concerned about this. I'm like, okay, well, if you want to like have anxiety about these things you've not seen yet, that's fine. But don't I don't try not to rub that stuff on other people. That's not what Killer of Xbox is doing here. They're just being an actual concerned yeah. troll. But hey, yeah, fair enough. Uh, uh, it's not killer E3 yet. Kill of Xbox with board money says, where is a Vowed, Fable, State of Decay 3, Coalition, and Everwild? Well, Avowed is probably going to get talked about at E3. There, Everwild, yeah. we, Everwild we know is in, well, got rebooted. So yes. Like, we know, we talked, Fable is, like, moving along. State of Decay 3 probably also moving along. And Coalition, oh, Fable, and Fable is also from a studio that just released a game, what, two months yeah. ago, three months ago? Right. So, yeah. And, yeah. and Coalition is working on the new gears and that other smaller project we've been talking about so yes yeah, so, like, they're, I mean, all, they're yeah. all making games is what they're doing right and, and you know they just bought activision so they have games coming like i mean if that's your concern if you're worried about them having games they've just bought activision so they're gonna have games yeah I, he must be really testy because uh playstation is dying entirely in 10 years yes right? <laughs> michael patrick got him worked that's up why, this week yeah that's why he's all worked <laughs> up <laughs> sorry dude uh, rip rip yeah. rip 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 yeah, yeah, it was, it was a good run. <laughs> yeah, it was a good run. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, we have some questions for people who don't uh, want to debate us. Yeah, sure, Maybe. let's do it. Uh, from these, so we have a lot of super chats coming in, guys. Thank you for those. We will read those after we get through uh, these questions from our Discord group. But you can keep sending in super chats for questions or for our topic today, which is um, what other Nintendo franchise deserves to get a 3D platformer kind of glow up. But first, from Benji Vile. Hey, Mike, since you used my community answer last week to publicly lambast my favorite Pokemon starter, I have to know, what are some of your favorite Pokemon so I can roast them like the sun? <laughs> Thanks as always. Have a great week. Uh, P.S. The friendship boats all have different color schemes, which is why they are numbered. I bet A.G. or Chris do that. And by the way, it's Grovile is the name of that awful Pokemon. Oh, okay, okay look. <laughs> If you're such a big friendship boat fan, then where is your replica wow. friendship boat dock sign, huh? This just came in, huh? It just came where in, huh? It? Looks great. Just, it's yeah, backwards for you. everybody, and I'm sorry about that. It's my fault, but it's uh, still, it's great. 
Yeah, yeah. It's for press, but you guys can figure it out. Yes. Uh, yeah, I don't. His, I think his Trico was the one that he liked, which is just an awful Pokemon. But uh, my favorites are Vaporeon, Cubone, really high up there for me. So yeah, you could trash those guys if you want to. Fair is fair. I like Snorlax. You would like Snorlax. I would, and I do. Uh, the Egg Doctor says, do you think that the Switch 2 will be backwards compatible with Switch games? Nintendo has traditionally been good with backwards compatibility, but recently they sure love selling Wii U games for 60 bucks. Uh, Jeff, they almost certainly, right? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. They will figure that one out. Uh, if there are any technical hurdles whatsoever, which there probably will be a little bit, uh, they will just come up with a tool to sort of automate that stuff, probably on NVIDIA's side. And all, yes. All that stuff's going to be compatible. But Benji in uh, chat said, Vaporeon, bad fish clone. People want to have sex with it. Uh, <laughs> Cuba's I mean, mom listen, died. That's it's, true of all Pokemon. Yeah. yeah I, t I tell you what, I, am, I was very confused when I found out that people thought that Vaporeon was sexy. I didn't yeah, like fair that. enough. Yeah. That, that upsets me. I think I have that. Yeah, I have a Vaporeon back there. You can kind of see it. Yeah, by the record. Yeah, I'm just going to stop myself. There's my thumb is pointing at it right now yeah yeah you see him back there all right, all right the before him flashlight yeah right yes thank you dr you dr turbo <laughs> says, says if the doss leaks are true and let's pretend they are i love pretending the next switch will be able to handle 4k games without needing to render 4k natively that should mean lower manufacturing costs for the next gen switch so where is Nintendo going to cut uh, cost cut and inevitably keep fans from getting PlayStation Five slash Series X ports like Elden Ring and Resident Evil remakes? <laughs> Do you think they're going to remove cheap the out second on analog again? stick? Now's the time. It will be something else. Jeff, I enjoyed. Um, MVG just had that video about the Super Nintendo yeah, like, hardware. I enjoyed kind of learning that it's, and I kind of knew it because that was the benefit that Genesis had over it was a better CPU. It was funny that like the Super Nintendo came out with kind of a bad. CPU. So this stuff has always sort of happened. Nintendo finds something to kind of mess up somewhere. Yeah. Uh, it, it's kind of like they might be the situation where NVIDIA forces them not to cut back just by being like, listen, we'll just give you a better deal on the good stuff. Please stop. Just do this instead. <laughs> uh, it, it will be better for us if we could spend more money making this architecture and all this stuff. So um, that, that's a bit of my hunch here where it's like NVIDIA just really wants to make a specific SOC that is actually very good. Uh, so if it's not the SOC, um, they could still cut back on RAM. I mean, that, that's the been the big issue with the switch really is like that four gigabytes of RAM that around, around that range, maybe like three gigabytes of addressable RAM. Um, that's been a real hamper to all these ports. I and mean, it's one of the reasons the Witcher was such a huge problem to get on the switch. They figured it out, but it was a huge problem. Uh, they will probably still actually put a, a, a pretty decent amount of RAM. And they'll, they, now there's much faster RAM they could put in there that solves a lot of these problems. So even if you don't want to use a lot, you use faster. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I I feel like uh, they will still find some creative way. They'll probably introduce some new gimmick that like is the focus. And, and uh, they'll probably, that'll be the hurdle where people be like, well, if we don't support this gimmick in our game, we're not gonna put it out on the Switch 2. And everyone's like, no, just put it out with the gimmick. We don't care. And everyone's like, well, developers are like, no, it costs extra money to support that. So we're not even going to try. That'll probably be how they figure it out. Is the Switch 2 going to not have an OLED screen so that in four years they can release yeah. an OLED version again? <laughs> probably, probably. Uh, right. Something like that, yes. There, there won't be an audio jack. It'll be like the Game Boy Advance SP. Yes, exactly. Turbo Madness says, hope all is well in RB Dog land. While I'm not surprised at all that Advance Wars 1 plus 2 reboot camp got delayed, was April 8 a good day for Advance Wars to thrive in sales anyway? On that date, it would have released two weeks after Kirby in the Forgotten Land and three weeks before Nintendo Switch Sports. That would have been between two games that feel like they'd sell more copies than Reboot Camp. I mean, those games would have. And I, I think you're right. And maybe that helped them make their decision anyways. That they, if, if they get rid of that, it already seems like their schedule is pretty good anyhow. But I think, I don't know if it would have deeply impacted Advanced Wars sales. I think the people who are, were going to buy that game were going to buy it wherever it came out. Yeah, I, I think that's one of the big stories of this year for Nintendo is they don't have a lot of gaps in their schedule right now. Uh, you know, they've filled things out through most of the summer and even like as we start to get in clo like close to fall with what was Xenoblade is in, in September or something like that. So, uh, um, yeah, not a lot of gaps in the schedule. Uh, so... If, we're, you know, you move it from April, you move it somewhere else, it's probably just going to be surrounded by other games, potentially even bigger games. So we'll have to wait and see. Nick Turbo says, 
Will Breath of the Wild 2 be Breath of the Wild's Breath of the Wild moment? Yes. Grant well, Smith Basketball asks, Hey, Jeff and Mike, with Breath of the Wild 2 hopefully out this year and the release of Elden Ring, I'm starting to see people say that Breath of the Wild 2 needs to learn from Elden Ring and be delayed if that's what it takes. Who's saying that? Some people are suggesting it should be pushed back to late next year in order to accomplish this. I agree with this. Let Zelda be Zelda. Disagree. I say, they let disagree. Elden Ring be Elden Ring. Ooh, I love both of these games for different reasons, and the kind of learning people are taking a, uh, talking about would involve pushing the game out another three to four years, which Nintendo won't let happen. What do you well, guys think? Should we just let Zelda be Zelda? Jeff, what do you have to say here? You seem, <laughs> you seem uppity. Yeah, well, I was just going to say, you said he agrees with that. He actually said he disagrees with that, but... Uh, uh, oh. Yeah, Sorry. that's fine. I, that, I was trying to correct you. were like, I disagree. I disagree strongly. And now no, I'm yeah, no, I was like, I was, I just, I just happened to start reading along right when you read the wrong words. So I was like, I'm gonna help. And then uh, I, did, I did not help actually. Um, I am uh, of the opinion that they should just release Breath of the Wild two as, however, they've been working on it. It really, what could they learn from I mean, Elden Ring? Well, I mean, I, I, I mean, Elden Ring is very heavily inspired by Breath of the Wild. Exactly. I'm not. I, I don't know. I. Breath, I mean, Elden Ring discourse has gotten real weird, and everybody's been getting themselves really worked up over it for for basically no reason. And I've right. I've really tuned a lot of it out, Jeff. I haven't really engaged with it because it turns out you don't need to do those things. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I don't even know who's saying this. I don't take them very seriously. I'm sure Nintendo is not going to do it anyways. There's no way Nintendo is going to be like, look at this new game. We have to delay the Zelda game a couple years now. That right. is not how it is going to work and look breath of the wild 2 is going to have new ideas anyways let's see what those are going to be instead of just the ones that are inspired by what happens to be the biggest new release that came out a couple weeks ago yeah i um i would love if breath of the wild 2 did have some elements of elden ring where it's like you get to the end of a cave and it's a unique awesome boss that you have to face and there was more yeah. enemy types i think that's the uh, one of the big things zelda could have and um and when you go and you discover something and it's not just always a Korok seed, maybe it's also a new enemy to fight. Like, right, like if yeah, there was exactly. more enemies, to like that would just be, that would make such a huge difference already. Yeah. Like it's already great the way it's set up Breath of the Wild and you discover caves all the time. Uh, I, I, and you know, of course I want those caves to be more elaborate like they are in Elden Ring to actually feel like dungeons of their own. That would be great. But I think they're kind of going to move in that direction anyhow. Like I would assume, like if you made Breath of the Wild and one of the, the most common complaints was there weren't enough real Zelda dungeons. To me, that feels like the first thing you address is like, okay, well, yeah. let's, how do we make a Breath of the Wild style dungeon filled world instead of just these, uh, uh, the, the temples, whatever they're called? Um, well, you just like add right. some in naturally into the environment. And like, uh, to me, I, that's what my hope is like, that's exactly what they've done. Out Elden uh, Ring does a really good job with having those areas that basically are just like Dark Souls levels, like the castle, the magic academy and yeah. stuff like that. And Zelda can absolutely just sort of throw in natural Zelda dungeons uh, like that. So, yeah. And, and I, yeah, I think these, it's probably the direction they're going to head in anyhow. But for the most part, Zelda Breath of the Wild and Elden Ring both nail the, the, the most important thing, which is you're exploring this world and it's fun to explore the world and it's like, yes, discoverability. And it doesn't sort of matter what's at the end because you're just sort of making your own, you know, path through this world and defining it yourself. And that's uh, the best part of both. I enjoyed strangers of uh, paradise, but I was very happy that I could get back to Elden ring uh, starting on Monday. And where are you, where, like, where are you at in Elden ring now? So you're I'm picking in the back middle up of the magic school. Okay. Yes. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Very cool. And right before that, I went in that underground area around there and it, like kind of talking to your point, like I went through this one underground cave and there's a bunch of bugs at the end of it, I was just in this giant, like, open area with this, like, giant throne with this big skeleton on it. And then, like, this boss appeared. And it was one of the coolest, like, areas in a video game I've been in a long time. Just yes, awesome. exactly. All right. Casual says, happy Thwomp Tuesday, Jeff and Mike. Is there a certain aspect of games that will always get your attention in some way, be it mechanical, visual, etc.? I'm a sucker for games that have a tropical setting. So Mario Sunshine will always have a place in my heart. I attribute this to growing up in southern Sweden, a place that doesn't see a lot of sun for a good chunk of the year, and where overcast is way too common. Yeah, I immediately get, like, a, a, I got a tingly feeling in the pit of my stomach getting excited about these kinds of games when he asked this question. Uh, any game with um, really granular physics or, like, Zelda's chemistry system. When I found out, like, Zelda had the thing where it's like you start a fire and the fire could spread and that fire can, like... Uh, cause something else to catch a fire and then that can explode and that could attract enemies and they could bring the stuff over and it could just cause these chain reactions. I'm like, okay, this is awesome. And then when I saw um, 
back before it was called mud mud runners it was a, a spin tires and when i saw the wheel going through the mud and deforming the mud perfectly i like blew my mind i'm like i have got to play this game and then more, most recently uh, an example of that was that um instruments of destruction which just tries to like do like really granular voxel destruction and it looks so great and i'm like yeah, I can't wait to like put, spend a lot of time with that game. That game is very intense, so it doesn't run great on the Steam Deck. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna have to like, I'll just stream that game and play it on the real big boy computer. So, yeah, any sort of granular physics system is is what gets me. Yeah, anytime like there's a 2D game that uses the actual like 2D animation art, that yes. always stands out to me. It's like even like Wario Land, Shake It, or um, a Seafarer very recently uh like I'm like oh man that just immediately looks appealing to me I want to play that just because uh of, of all this amazing looking animation work or it was even though it wasn't always 2d animation kind of a similar thing but uh you guess Hollow Knight very much like that uh Nufi Turbo says good day Dogs. have you heard any rumblings on if the Metroid Prime collection or remaster will make its way to the switch this year also hoping for 60 fps if we are lucky Jeff uh, sorry, Emmy's got a thing full of water and she's trying to get me to take it, so I just got distracted. W what games? Uh, the Metroid Prime Collection slash remaster. Yeah, it'll, it, yes, it probably won't be a collection, as we said a couple times now. Uh, that was, uh, uh me conflating that with what is actually Zoom what they're me, working on. Which, you know, uh, Metroid Prime I 1 sort of remaster. Uh, I, yeah, the, the rumblings continue, continue to be that that game is getting really close to being ready. Um, it's like, it's very, very, very far along. Uh, so... Whether or not that means it's like done and ready to go, I don't know that at this point. It's it definitely sound like they've been at that point near that point for a long time. Um, but even if they do, even if it is finished, it's the kind of game that they will hold on to until they're ready. Uh, I I would imagine that they are probably looking at their schedule, determining what's going to be in E three right now, and there's a strong chance it could be there. I would hope so. If it's not E three, I'm going to start the despair. Yes, that's maybe. fair. I'm me too, honestly. So yeah, we could despair together. All right, sounds good. Jump Matt says, what do you think Goodfield's next game will be? What would you like it to be? I hope Nintendo taps them to visually def redefine 2D Mario. Uh, Goodfield is actually a company, so who they, they made uh, Wario Land Shake It. Oh, okay. And they did, like, Kirby, uh, Epic Yarn, and Yoshi's Woolly World. So a lot of the games I like, I like the way their games look, maybe not necessarily how they play. I would right. like for them to do another Wario Land, actually. Uh, it's been because theirs was the last one, and it came up for the Wii. But... I think that would be interesting to help them at least visually work on 2D Mario. Plus, I think they're better at visuals than, like, the level design anyway. So, yeah, let them make the visuals and let... Like, you can have the new Super Mario Brothers guys make the levels, I suppose, if they use, like, their uh, good feels good 2D assets or whatever, right? Right. You, I mean, you could just... Right. You would At that point, you would just have someone from the Mario team oversee the project and, and be like, okay, no, you got actually have to make this fun. That's the important thing here. And so, yeah. I agree. Velocity Prime One says the Nintendo Dogs have been bestowed the great opportunity of becoming the maestro of a world-renowned orchestra. With Jeff and Mike's newfound power, what underrepresented gaming-themed concert would you guys cook up? A concerto for Daisy or a full-blown rendition of the DK rap? I mean, a Donkey Kong uh, concert in general would be pretty good. I don't know how underrepresented that would be, though. Uh, Jeff, do you have any ideas here? What would you, what, what Nintendo yeah. property would you give a concert to? It would probably actually be like, oh, let's do the forgotten games. So all the games that like aren't normally going to get a concert. So like cruising, all the whole cruising series, but like also like, uh, uh, the Excite bike series and the, the Excite trucks and the Excite bots and all that stuff. Uh, just kind of take all the music from all those games and, uh, do a concert. I think that'd be cool. I'll just uh, I'll just say Star Tropics again because that's why whenever it's like something something obscured uh, or, or underrepresented Nintendo for chess something something I'll say Star Tropics. Like it does have good music. Redfall says, "Are we going to see people on the internet claiming Breath of the Wild Two is a Elden Ring clone?" Absolutely. I mean, you're going to see people on the internet say anything. Yes. You don't have to, you don't have to <laughs> exactly. pay them any mind. That's right. I, I uh, you make you said I I didn't agree at the time, but I agree. I've also also mostly not been engaging in uh, people talking about Elden Ring in that way where it's like. Especially like Western developers freaking out about, oh, the UI is not the way we do things. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go back to playing this game. Right. Uh, and and if um, when we get to Breath of the Wild 2, I foresee myself doing much of the same thing at that time. Because I'm probably just going to want to enjoy the game. And even since 2017, 
discourse on the internet has changed enough that it's like, oh, I could tell, I can predict right now it's going to be miserable when that game yeah. comes out. Was, the better the game is, the more miserable it's going to be actually to be online yeah. to talk about. Yes. It. So absolutely. I mean, start with Breath of the Wild. It was everybody, yep. it was so many people's favorite game. It was like unanimous game of the year. It's clearly the most influential game of the last like decade, maybe. Awful discourse, yes. right? You <laughs> yep. don't have to be involved with it. Yes, so. <laughs> you're right. VJ incoming. Hey, Nintendogs, I'm pitching some content for patrons. You know what's really Ooh. hot right now? Pokemon Smash or Pass videos. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah, All okay. the top content creators are doing I'll do it. about Vaporeon. All the top calm down. All the top content creators are doing it, and I'd love to see the beef and cheddar boys defend their tastes against each other when one of you inevitably has a really left field answer. Plus, Turbo Sean isn't into the idea, so it must be a good one. We all know how bad his opinions are. Jeff, is this just us saying what animals we want to have sex with? Yes. I think I'm gonna have to say no. I, I, for patrons, for patrons yeah. only, uh, keep that, keep your for eye on that feed. patrons only, find out what animals Jeff would <laughs> beg. Car, be clear, cartoon animals. Let's be fully <laughs> honest about what we're doing here. Oh, no. I don't uh, see an issue. The, the, the egg doctor says, Mario Kart 9 <laughs> seems a way off now that they are adding more tracks to 8, but what things do you want Nintendo to add to 9 when it eventually launches? I want it to be easier to see who you hit with an item, so that's who you hit with an item. And special items per character, like in Double Dash. Yeah, that's what they really should bring back from Double Dash. Like, I, I understand they don't want to bring back the whole two people in a cart thing. But each character having a special item is yeah. Of course, the problem is balancing then. Because uh, some, like, I remember Double Dash, it, like, Donkey Kong had a giant banana pill that was easy to avoid. Whereas the babies had that chain chomp that would give them a giant speed boost for a long time and hit anybody in their path. So... Uh, that could be a nightmare just balancing that stuff. So that's probably why they don't do it. Uh, the big thing is like Nintendo All Stars, like the Smash Cart, right? We we keep right. saying that. That and I want I want a gruesome, realistic ballistics with with human guns. That's now, what I want. You want twisted metal? Twisted, just twisted metal, but just like handguns. Skip a handgun. What I want is <laughs> Luigi fired handguns. I don't want, I don't else want any of that in except the character Axel from Twisted Metal, whose arms go. are the wheel, right. and he's like screaming in pain the entire time because he's just <laughs> exposed, and everyone's shooting him with like bullets and missiles. I just what, want that character. What would in Toad Mario say Kart. if he saw Axel right next to him? Is what I want to know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, Winnie says Pokemon got Pokken. What other Nintendo franchise aside from Mario could be a fighting game? What would its dumb hybrid name? B. I could see like a, a Zelda uh fighting game that's like Masters of Terakasai. Ter Terakazi. Terakazi. Terak well, excuse me, Please, Jeff. I get right to it. Don't you. embarrass me. Yeah. Let's get let's get, uh, let's get let's get ready to tingle. Yeah, there you name. go. Okay, very good. Yes. Yes, uh, Tingle's uh Rumble Rosy Land. Rumble Rumble Roses. Yeah, was that was that a fighting game? I'm trying to remember. Yes, there you go. Turbo Octo says there's only so many hours in a week and so much Owner Ring to play. This might sound like a silly question, but what is the game mess ranking of content? Like, if I only have time for one of the podcasts or shows or whatever, what should I prioritize? What is the flagship of the game mess? Thanks. Have a great week. I mean, I feel bad saying this while we're on here, but I think Games Beat Decides is still the flagship, I suppose, huh? Yeah, when we cover more, and, and we'll talk about Nintendo longer. if we have to there and stuff. It's longer, you're right. It's, uh, but, you, know, you know, we, we take like, we take a ton of questions, so it's like a lot of stuff gets covered. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's better. Like, Raw was always the WB flagship, but there were lots of times where SmackDown was better than Raw for years. So That's true. Yeah. I, I Honestly, uh, I think it's the reason we're saying it's just, it just covers a broader subject. But if your interest is Nintendo, definitely Nintendo X is probably the right answer for you. I mean, you could decide it's also the original, so... <laughs> There goes Red. Red who's like, okay, and then I'm tuning out. God damn no, it. We messed up. We messed up. <laughs> Nintendo Bro says, what's been the best meal you've been fed in your time in Nintendo jail? I like the wall meat from Castlevania. Like sometimes I go by ourselves and just crack it like the 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 wall there with a whip and a chunk of meat with a giant bone sticking out comes out and they kind of angrily throw it at us, but it, it tastes pretty good. I like the uh, little electric gummy looking guys from Kirby. When he eats those, I always wondered like what that would taste like. Just um, electric Pop gummy rocks. bears. You're right. Pup rocks are electric gummy bears. That's already the answer. You're right. Yep. The Turbo Jedi Moss Force says, what company that Nintendo should have already owned by now is going to be bought next? One, Howl Laboratory. Two, Intelligent Systems. Three, Grezzo. 
for some random company they've accidentally overlooked or uh, in their basement <laughs> for 10 years, or accidentally locked in their basement for 20 years. <laughs> Probably the last one. Uh, they don't own intelligent systems. They do not own int intelligent systems. Or how no. laboratory? I mean, again, it's like they're again they're getting the juice from those ones already, right? Right. Um, I so, think the I think of these the most likely one is Grezzo. Grezzo is the one that strikes me as the one they'd be like, "What if we sold the ten cent? What would you think then, Nintendo?" I think the other ones are like, "We've been, I don't know, maybe I'm just making this up." I don't I mean, know. We talked about Goodfeel earlier. Nintendo uh, doesn't own Goodfeel either, so these yeah they just work with a ton of these companies. Uh, so it's, it is, which again makes it all the more interesting that they did just straight up buy next level games. Yep. Like we're not messing around here. Low Rule says if E3 doesn't come back this year, is there any chance that Nintendo doesn't have a direct during the summer like uh, they did in 2020? Um, uh, no, I mean, they'll, they'll have, no, I think if they don't have E3, they'll have something. Uh, not Maybe not that month, but before the end of this year. I mean, yeah, yeah. They'll they'll have, they'll have another big showcase this year. Cause they, have, they I mean, they have to fill out their entire back of the suite. I suppose they could do all of that with tweets, which is what they kind of did during twenty twenty. Isn't that right? Um, my, uh, my, my the inclination I get is that they have many more games backed up now because of the pandemic and delaying things and delaying things and delaying things. And uh, I think they would be it would be harder to do all that in tweets because there'd be a lot. Because I think they're gonna have a lot for the rest of this year. Jeff, I am almost afraid to ask because I've seen some of these and people are getting weird this week. But would Ooh. you like to read some of the super chats? You know I do. All right, let me. Uh, wow, we got a whole bunch in here. So let's uh, let's go back to the beginning here with Mr. Grant Taylor. Hey guys, wanted to say I th uh, I think your shows are criminally underrated. Thank you, Grant. They're probably um, rated about where they should. Yeah, be. we we yeah we we think we might actually be hitting above our our average here. Um, <laughs> Most gay podcasts are just talking heads, but you guys bring a true insight into the industry, plus a fun take on games in general. Hey, we, that's what we go for, I think. Yeah. Uh, clowns that know what they're talking about is what Fucking we're going Vaporeon for. Fucking Vaporeon is wrong. Yes. Uh, Got to get consent from from Vaporeon. Well, right? I mean, exactly. I never, to be clear, I never said consent was an issue. <laughs> okay. Look, right. Even if Vaporeon is okay with it, <laughs> you shouldn't do that. Even if Vaporeon's DTF. Okay, uh, I'm trying to. I'm not sure what I'm going to name this episode this week. Uh, <laughs> Before you on DTF, I think is what you're going to name it. I'm afraid. Uh, uh, Major Turbo Blazer. Pretty sad. There's still no Arms sequel. Sad face. And then, uh, in addition to writing sad face, they use uh, the emoticon of a sad face. So, um, Mike, well, are gonna we going to get another Arms? It is going to happen. I think someday that's think going so to too. happen. I think so too. I think. I mean, there's. They, they clearly care enough about to put one of those characters in Smash. Uh, they'll revisit that. Uh, from Luke Tone. Thanks for all you guys do. Shouts from Toronto. Luke Tone shouts to you for Turning Red, which takes place in Toronto. So very good. I, uh, I need to see that. So my oh, family uh, so good. would go to Toronto a lot when I was like a young teenager for, for trips. In fact, the first time I played in Nintendo 64 was at Ontario Place. It's kind of theme park thing that used to be there. And they had like uh, one of their like expo areas was devoted to the the town 64 ahead of launch it was the first time i played mario 64 and it blew my mind but yeah i loved i love toronto it's a fantastic city we went to go see the indians play at the sky dome i forget yeah, what it's sky called dome seems now right yeah yeah and uh we saw they have they have like a nice uh broad like a theater district we saw phantom of the opera there i think i saw being the beast i might have seen lion king there too but yeah when i uh fantastic. when my wife moved back from france from teaching in france uh she flew back to toronto because it was cheaper and i told her i'd come pick her up and I forget, and this was uh, when they were getting pretty intense about um, uh, passing the border, and I forgot my passport or like ID or something, so I I had to drive immediately back to Columbus, and uh, and I actually took a bus the first time. Then I so I got I, I took a bus back, got my car, got my wallet, uh, went back, and uh, I was running late, so I actually had beige. Remember beige from um, the Squadron of Shame, who lives yeah, in Toronto? Beige. This I texted him. Was like, listen, could you meet meet her there? Because I, I, she's in the air. She I can't get a hold of her. And she's going to be expecting me. Can you just let her, like, meet her there and say hey? And then they actually, like, drove her to their place and, like, took care of her until I could meet him up, meet up with everybody and pick him up. So Yeah, I miss Beige. Beige was awesome. Yeah. We looked Beige, up to Beige. I've been seeing him on Steam. He's been playing a lot of Elden Ring. Cool. I'm glad um, you still at it. Yeah, great yeah me too. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm glad you're still playing games. Uh, mobile Gaming Master Race. <laughs> uh, this, the, for context, this came in after Xbox lost slash PlayStation 1. 
So uh, here, here's we're getting some more folks in on the action here now. Mobile Gaming Master Race has this to say. How does it feel that Switch will never be on the level of real mobile gaming? <laughs> Must hurt to know that Zelda is worse than Genshin. At least it's better than trash Brett consoles and, and PC and fat Steam Deck. Man, we're getting owned by Mobile Gaming Master Race. It's Switch has got Chocobo GP, and that's basically a mobile game, except you have to pay 50 bucks for it, so... Uh, Guess what Mobile Gaming Master Race's uh, icon is? Oh, uh, what is it? What is it? Flappy Bird. (laughs) Nice. You love Flappy Bird. I do love Flappy Bird. This owns. Uh, uh, From Hunter Smith. Mike looks... I don't, I don't know if I could read this. Um, uh, okay. Um, I'm going to have to read it in a different voice so it doesn't feel like it's coming out of my mouth. Mike looking breedable as fuck today. Not even paying attention to scrub. Okay. All right. Thank you, Hunter Smith, for that. Uh, what is going on here? People are getting... They want right, to breed be- me? <laughs> I'm I, have ba- I have bad news about my reproductive organs. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the, the the concern in your voice as you said that really got me. Uh, That's Ron- absolutely going to be a, a GIF from Creaky Lakes. I'll tell you what, they yeah. want to breathe <laughs> me. I can, I can see it already. Uh, from Ronnie Sil- Silva, uh, just wanted to thank you for the podcast. We want to apologize for the podcast at this point. <laughs> um, super fun and entertaining. Keep going. Cheers from Quebec. Wow, we're getting lots of love from wow. Canada I today. I also got, went to Quebec once, and it was very pretty. Uh yeah, I love, Canada's got amazing cities. Uh, it's, all, it's all good. Uh, yes, uh, much love to Canada. I've never been to Quebec. I would love to go. Um, I, I did like that weird tour of Canada, like studios sponsored by the government at one point. So I went to Toronto. Which oh, I went right. To yes. Port, yeah. To Quebec City, Montreal. Quebec City was was amazing because it was like a European city. Yes. But in North America, it was, it was almost bizarre. Like there were forts and stuff. Uh, it reminds Here. me of being like one of those kind of mid tier cities in France. They um, um they, 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 and that's you were able to accept travel because we do not cover Canada as a tech or video game company. It came to the adventure beat, so it was like you were like, yeah. yeah, yeah, cool. We'll just travel on Canada's dime. Sure, why not? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it was us going to rooms and like people, like governments were like giving us pitches, or we we toured sure. some, like we went to Ubisoft. We went to like a bunch of Ubisoft because they have one at almost every single place there. But it was fun. Uh, let's see where are we at from from Hitch. Steam API release dates leaked. Uncharted PC July fifteenth, Hollow Knight twenty twenty eight. That sounds right. So Hollow Knight coming out around the same time as Quantic Dream Star Wars game. Okay, exactly right around that same time. Yeah. Uh, Killer of Xbox. We we got this one. I love you, Killer. Uh, from Brett. He hates thanks you to be clear. <laughs> <laughs> can't fucking stand you. <laughs> Uh, thanks for all the entertainment and covering all the major platforms. All have great games. Hey, absolutely, Brett. Thank you for being uh, so nice. We appreciate Thank that. Uh, Hitch asks, Gears Collection? I don't know. I feel I gotta get better about stating up front when I don't know something, Mike, instead of just starting yeah, immediately yeah, speculating. Do you think, God. uh, you think they would put judgment into Gears Collection if people remember judgment? I think they would. I think they were like, we're going to take ownership of making judgment once again. I think I they mean, would. there's nothing wrong with judgment. It was right, like, it was exactly. like same, there was like a God of War like that on PlayStation 3. Ascension, also, like, yeah. Yeah, like where it was like, oh, they made another one. That okay. one was, was that primarily multiplayer? Is that what that God of War was? No, it was just another God of, It was just another prequel. That's what I thought. I, it was some, like the PSP ones where yeah, right. it's like, it plays exactly the same. It's just inconsequential and kind of weird feeling because it takes place like, earlier than the stuff we already played so what of consequence can happen you know um from div and greedy uh link's awakening remake is a great game you guys think we might get nintendo ips remade with this engine or if uh if they can or are they going to do a mario maker style game with zelda dungeons thanks for the great show i mean either of those things it wouldn't be i don't know if it'd be at that and just specifically they're going to remake more nintendo games yeah, uh, obviously, like they did it with Advance Wars. I don't know about that engine. I don't think specifically we are going to get the Oracle games remade. Sadly, and that, I mean that uh, was un, that was just Unreal Engine too. So it's like, mm. you know, they'll probably they yeah, see, probably would probably use Unreal. More like in that style than he. Needs I know which I, I get. I get what people mean when they say that. I'm just yeah. being pedantic. Okay. Uh, I uh, yeah. I I mean I think Grezzo's working on something. Probably Zelda game. Probably a remat remake of something old. Probably not. I mean, the Oracle games were the ones that make sense because you're not going to remake uh, 
uh, the, the what's the Capcom one? No, the other Capcom Minish one. Cap? Dude. Yeah, Minish Cap. Like Minish Cap looks too no. good. You couldn't it remake that. It looks good. It looks good all right. Although you know they go they they Mario and Luigi looks real good and they remade that for no reason. So okay, fair enough. Yeah. Um, from Jeremy G. Badly, so. Yeah. Uh, video games are neat, says Jeremy G. Thank you, Jeremy G. Yeah, I I, I agree with that. Um, Afro Ahmed. Thoughts on the Chrono Trigger update uh, slash Switch port? Uh, so yeah, did, did did you check out this update since the, uh, yeah. the Square Enix updated? Apparently, it supports like ultra widescreen now, or at least very widescreen. Yeah. yeah, it's at the point like that port came out pretty shoddy, but they've been improving it steadily since then, and it is at a point now where it's like, well, yeah, why why isn't this just on Switch? And I don't yes. know. Yes. Yeah, uh, it's getting weird. I mean, listen, I know these games sell pretty well on Steam. They sell way better on Switch. So what's going on here? I, at a certain point, just put the damn thing out. Let people buy it. Um, especially if you're putting all this work into it to update it. Mm. Whatever. Uh, from Space Dovahkiin, why the Switch doesn't support any upscaling option right now, considering it has a Tegra 1X Plus like the NVIDIA Shield? Yeah, um, it, it, it's a little bit strange, but I think it's just a, a matter of um, kind of s simplifying things, make sure it just kind of works consistently. Uh, I wonder if upscaling might mess with UI and the readability of UI. Like, that might be an issue. Would that be an issue? I can't, I'm trying to think of, like, what that would be like. It probably would just... In, integer, if you just integer scale, probably wouldn't cause any problems. I don't know. I'd have to think about it a little bit more. But um, it's probably just something Nintendo doesn't prioritize, so they didn't include it. Uh, but I, I will say that if you want something that sort of upscales and you're willing to spend a little bit of money, get that um, M cable, uh, the little M cable thing. I have I did a review on it. So if you if you Google search M cable games beat, it'll come up. And that makes those games look like really sharp, like 1440p almost. It's I really like it. I know MVG always dismisses it, but don't listen to MVG. Listen to me. Um, unless you're unless we're talking about how Super Nintendo graphics work. Uh, from Dan Otaku, what would Breath of the Wild two learn from Elden Ring that Elden Ring isn't something that Elden Ring learned from Breath that isn't something that Elden Ring already learned from Breath of the Wild one? Enemy enemy variety is about it. Yeah, that's kind of what we were going yeah. on. That's what I think. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's about it. And just kind of being even more breath of the wild. Even more. That's like, what it is. Yeah. yeah, just like like just going off the beaten path and discovering something amazing every time. That's it. Right. Yeah, because I'm I, I I I get excited when I get to the end of a, a, a cave in uh Elden Ring and I get an axe. I don't have a character that uses axe, but I'm still excited because I like went through and I follow these enemies. And it's like, oh, there's something fun at the end of this thing. And that's like basically the equivalent for my character of finding a Korok seed. But it was still fun. And, and the enemy variety continues to like the storytelling of the enemy variety is actually what we mean there. Like when you get to a cave and you could tell that these NPCs, that these enemy NPCs are there because they are doing a job. They are actually like mining crystals or something like that. That's cool. That like makes that world feel even more alive. And I would love to see something like that in BOTW2, which I don't know why I called it that. Uh... Let's see, uh, another one for Space Dovahkiin. The Elden Ring moment of the Breath of the Wild. I forget what we were talking about, but this seems like a reference to something we were talking about. We talked about a lot of things, and a lot of that has been obscured by some of the weird things we've talked about now. But yes. Right, right, breeding Mike Bonatti, right, yes. Yeah, uh, breeding me. <laughs> like, I'm kind of, like, well, I, I guess if I'm breeding, I'm like the stud, right? So that's it, flattering. Sure. Uh, from <laughs> from Sarker, 85. Uh, prediction one, Avowed will be Jeff Grubb's 2023 Game of the Year. Prediction two, Mikey will last a surprisingly long 37 seconds when he finally loses virginity in 2027. You weren't wrong about these ones getting weird. Oh, my God. Wow. This is mean. Yeah. Uh, this one came in twice, too. So, I mean, it looks like they might have paid us $10 for that. So, I think that's, that's deserved. Okay. Thank you for yes. that. Yes. Jeff, I, look, Jeff, I feel I, – I, I almost hate having to say this. I am not a virgin. <laughs> I do. I hate that I have to say it, but I'm just gonna say it. Mike, you don't have to convince me. I'm. Thank I know. You. Uh, from Lost oh, Boys Gaming. We yes. Oh yes. I'm yes. I've been keeping tabs, Mike, on your love life. So trust me, I know. Uh, will Breath of the Wild two be delayed simply because how much uh, and big IPs Nintendo is putting out this year? That That's would not be why. Way. But but you know it could still it could help them convince them that it's okay to delay it. But it wouldn't be the, the reason. The reason they would delay it is because it needs to be delayed. Like, otherwise... Otherwise, like, if they are headed towards, or like, a, a guaranteed release date later this year, and they also have a bunch of other games coming out, getting the, the big train moving of marketing a game like that and preparing for all that stuff, that is a lot of work. It's a lot of effort. When you delay a game, it's not just like, oh, now we get more time. Now it's like, oh, and everyone else is working on all of the surrounding efforts of launching a game. 
need to move their timelines and that's really annoying and frustrating and expensive so they want to avoid that if they can uh another one for brett any chance of a xenogears hd 2d treatment they should especially since like if everyone loves the original xenogears but they basically ran out of money and the last disc is basically just like a slideshow of story elements and then you fight a boss every once in a while so they could hd 2d that one and actually make it a complete game this time that'd be fantastic uh, Nick Turbo uh, corrects the record. It says, he, he, Mike Bonani did fuck my mom. Yeah, that's so. what happened last time somebody did this. I don't know where this come from, Jeff. Jeff, do I have an air of virginity about me? What is this? What What's giving it? Is it is it the collection of toys I have you, behind yeah, me? Yeah, you did. You, did, Mega did, Man you were able to, on command, point your thumb at a Vaporeon doll uh, in the middle but of our people podcast. People love to have sex with Vaporeon. That's sexy. <laughs> that's a sex symbol now, apparently, right? You're right. You've, you've once again convinced me of, of, of all the sex you've had because of Vaporeon this time. Yes, that's right. Uh, in fact, oh. you get one each time you have sex. That's, <laughs> that's, that's what, how that you know, Very good point. Right. It's what, remember the episode of Star Trek <laughs> Next Generation the mail. Where, yeah. where Picard went to the sex planet and Riker was like, make sure you get this Dohachu thing or whatever. So he does. And it's like, oh, that's the thing you buy and display when, you, when you're when you like DTF. Yeah, right. That's, okay. what my, that's what Vaporeon is. Yes, that is. Exactly. You got to go hang it from your door. Uh, from Jeremy G. Mike Stud Stallion Minotti. There you uh, go. The Italian go. Stallion. Yeah. Uh, Mike, I, I, I am happy to say that that is the last <laughs> of the Super Chats for now. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Well, then let's... <laughs> We'll move on for now, and uh, let's get to this topic. Ooh. What other Nintendo franchise deserves to have a new 3D platformer a la Kirby and the Forgotten Land? Jeff, is there something specifically that you would like to see kind of finally get a 3D platformer treatment that either never has or hasn't in a very long time? I'm like, you know, I, I feel like you know, I could go like cheat and be like, oh, something kind of similar to that, like, uh, be, oh, Ice Climbers or something like that. But I kind of want to go slightly different and maybe uh, one that doesn't make a lot of sense at first. But I think if you think about it, because uh, I'm just going to uh, excite bike. Um, and by, what I mean there is like when you play tr recent Trials games, which are 2D, they feel a lot like a platforming game. And I feel like there is a way to take that idea and turn it into like this 3D platform game where it's just basically like you're trying to climb this mountain and you got to figure out a way to get this bike up this mountain and make it very physics heavy, like Excite Bike 64. Uh, yeah, I, you I, think there's been sportscapes that have felt like 3D platforms, uh, exactly. like 3 games, really. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think I think that could be a really cool match. And I would love, I love Excite Bike 64. Put that like just take that racing idea put it into something like a Mario 64 style level or something like that. And I think it actually would be a pretty so cool Banjo match. Banjo-Kazooie nuts and bolts. Yes, exactly. Yes. Banjo-Kazooie nut, nuts and bolts. Exactly. But like make it all like feel like Excite Bike 64 and I'd be very happy. I think that's uh, something that could be very interesting and very different and kind of stand out and sort of justify itself alongside like, oh yeah, we're doing Mario games. Now we're doing Kirby games. So do we really would need another, just another mascot platformer? I think Excite Bike could be something different. Something I want to give nuts and bolts an actual go i never gave it much of a it's chance it's fun it's good but, you know we've we missed you did miss one super chat here jeff uh, from radu here uh, Ooh, sorry about that but yeah, okay, i'll read for you right now please says, how crazy is it that FromSoft has oh, ditched their ability while zelda has embraced it can't wait for Elden ring 2 to have a quest log while breath of the wild does it <laughs> i am curious jeff, about the future of weapon durability because i it's never bothered me i kind of liked it even in breath of the wild but it is but if, you if they got rid of it People would shut the fuck up, and that is like a benefit in almost itself. Almost be worth it. Almost be worth it. Yes. Yeah. Like I like but it a lot. It does help. Do. It does benefit the game. I don't know if I like it so much that I enjoy putting up with people always whining about it every time <laughs> the game comes up. That's yeah. not so much my favorite. I know, but to me, it like seems like such a fun part of the game where it's like, yeah, it's like in the middle of a fight, maybe you need to pick up that that Magoblin's uh, club to start right. using it. Yep, and uh, it's like, you know, and there's always so stuff laying around. So it's like, you got to just kind of keep things in your periphery and know where things are because at any moment it could break. Any moment your gun could run out of ammo but, in Halo, it's the same concept, everybody. Yeah. But even <laughs> like, so, but even uh, like the weapon durability in the Souls games, and maybe I'm wrong, it, it's not like things break, right? It's just they, I mean, they don't permanently break. They break, you need to like go get them like repaired. Like right, and, they, and they, like you can even still you keep using them right, but they don't they're yeah. not as effective, I think is what it is, something like that. Right. Like that kind of durability is usually like even MMOs, sometimes I wish they get rid of that, but in MMOs it it kind of plays this important role of being a money sink because 
otherwise the economy just keeps inflating because there's more and more money being introduced and not not enough of it leaving. So, uh, all right, Jeff. So for me, this 3D platformer thing. I think last time I said Yoshi, and I still think that's the right answer, especially since they basically just made all those mechanics for the end of Odyssey. Like that exists. There's a lot of interesting answers here. You said um, Ice Climbers, and that would be kind of neat because you could do something cool. there with the whole two characters thing, right? Like, you're, you're controlling both of them at the same time. That would kind of be fun. But why don't we see what the community said about this one, Jeff? Let's do it. Benji Vile says, I think the most obvious answer for the franchise that should get a 3D platformer game is the Cruisin' series. No, seriously, what if they did a cluster truck-style platformer and get real wacky with it? I think that would be right up the franchise's alley. Tell me I'm wrong. You can't. This seems pretty similar to your to your whole uh, Excite Truck idea. Yes. Alex says, Star Fox. Aside from the Nintendo 64 remakes and memes about bad titles, Fox is my uh, in my lifetime has pretty much only been a Smash Bros. character. I think he should get another entry where he can go on an adventure with those Smash abilities of his and then some solid space dogfighting or even exploration. Plus, the perverts can get more crystal. I wonder if maybe 3D platformer would make more sense than the kind of Zelda adventure game route or even the third-person shooter route they did for yeah. Star Fox already. Yeah, it feels like Zelda, the Zelda thing should have worked, but it just felt like they made a, a game that wasn't very fun, and that was the problem. But uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say no to a Star Fox platformer. It seems like these days do, I wouldn't at all. Yeah, they need to do something with this. like a Star Fox game. It's pretty hard for it to come out and just be a Star Fox game, like you're flying ships, right? It seems like people expect or want something else. Uh, like Star Fox Zero was kind of a pure Star Fox game, and I know it had some wonkiness with the extra right. screen and its gyro controls but that was you know it was the closest we got to just a sequel to star fox 64 since star fox 64 came out and people didn't really like it all that much so so i don't know maybe uh maybe, maybe giving a little 3d platformer action and then still having those traditional r-wing sections would be right. a move to make um oh well turbo sean just says i also think the star fox series should explore 3d platforming as mentioned smash gave a bunch of crazy new mobility options to fox and friends that can make for some interesting... Well, fine, Alex is right. I just want to see Crystal again, okay? <laughs> Outside of Smash, my favorite Foxy Girl has been MIA since 2006. God damn it. Nothing can keep us apart. Not time, not Miyamoto. <laughs> it's certainly not you, Mike. As a much more enlightened Nintendo once said, having sex with cartoon characters is your right as an American. This is why people think Vaporeon is sexy, because Vaporeon is kind of like... is is, is, yeah, is Crystal adjacent, yeah. isn't it? It's just right. more like an animal. Right, so it's just uh, Crystal's earlier evolution before she yes. gets the final evolution where she's just on two legs, right? She's just on two legs yeah. and has breasts. Yep. Wildfire Alex says, F-Zero because it's probably the only way we'll actually get a new entry in the series. That one I'm having mm -hmm. a harder time imagining. Like, if anything, you would make, like, a beat-em-up. You would make the bouncer, <laughs> but, <laughs> but with... But with Captain Falcon. I, I, I still want my open world F-Zero sort of mystery, like, uh, crime game set in Mute City. That's what I want. Oh, my God. Uh, Turbo Madden says, Fire Emblem should get a 3D platformer. Yes, there there are character action games with the Fire Emblem Warriors series, but we need a platformer where insert anime sword hero can jump around, <laughs> fight enemies, and get collectibles. What collectibles, you say? All the waifus and husbandos that you can date. You just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just like that, real life, just collect your, your waifus and husbandos, yeah. That's something. Dr. Turbo says, Kid Icarus, he can fly, so it would really need to be uh, really creative, but at least there'd be one Kid Icarus game that controls well. Oof. I still want to, I still need to play Uprising at some point here. Courageous McBasketball says, I wouldn't want a 3D platformer exactly, but a character action F-Zero game starring Captain Falcon would be incredible. Yeah, so the bouncer, but with Captain Falcon, yeah. Uh, B Papa Why is says, that your I go to. <laughs> Shut up, Jeff. It is all right. <laughs> I think about the bouncer for a game I, I, mean, I, I never do actually too. played. Yeah, yeah, same. I never right. played it. Me neither. I think about that game the bouncer a lot. all the time. Absolutely. But I just... thought about buying it many times because it was an early place to do game. Like it's Square Enix, but it's like I know it's not supposed to be good, and it doesn't even look very good. But like, there's something about it that I found yep. appealing, Jeff. I don't. I mean, know it was why. just so different than everything that came before right. in, the, in the previous generations. So it was like. There's got, I mean, imagine if this game is good, and then of course it wasn't, but whatever. Someday I'll get to the Yes, yeah, so we'll do a stream of it. There we go. But B Papa says, I think it would be fun to revisit Foxanadu, although I'm not sure what the right situation is there. Two words, wing boots. But when I think about that power-up, it makes me realize that the right answer is just Kid Icarus. Yeah, Kid Icarus would make 
a lot of sense. We've and, really know, offended was... Ryan David in chat, who is the number one The Bouncer fan. We're sorry, <laughs> Ryan David. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, but yeah, well, Kid Icarus, like, Uprising was kind of an action game. It had shooter elements and had like like th- third person action elements. So maybe something more in a 3D platformer angle would be good. Fox Sonic, dude, that's an interesting answer. I need a, that's an NES game I haven't really played or played much of. Maybe someday I'll give that more of a go. You could beat video games in an episode on that also. Cool. Beat Hammer says the Mario Odyssey team needs to drop whatever sequel or Donkey Kong game they are doing and just give Waluigi his own 3D platformer. They can make it play like Jeff's favorite game, oh, Ball good. in Wonder World, yeah. where every button does the same move <laughs> and Waluigi must get. Uh, what switch costumes to get new powers, Jesus? Yeah, I kind of feel like a Waluigi game should be aggressively uh, player unfriendly. That's fair. <laughs> aggressively <laughs> unfriendly. Yeah. Pablo Casas says balloon fight 3D platformer. Let's go. That that's pretty interesting. I like that. That's good. That's a good idea. You're, you're gonna have to fill in a lot of gaps, though. <laughs> sure. Yeah, you know. but that's the, that's the exciting part. Is there's a lot of gaps to fill. Casual says pushmo slash pullmo. The entire world is your block to pull. That could be interesting. I never played those games. Are those games basically like Catherine? Uh, I guess they're the. They, I think they are much more like puzz, even more puzzly than Catherine. Catherine's like continue. Is it Catherine? Is that the name of that game? Um, yeah. with, that, that game's much fun. more just about continuing to ascend. I think I never played Catherine. Um, it's but, a puzzle uh, game, but yeah, you yeah. have to ascend by pushing and pulling blocks. Yeah, push and pull. It's like oh, each one might be slightly different in terms of how you. I don't know. Yes, it's it's, it's Catherine. Catherine. It's Catherine. That I played, Catherine. Uh, Turbo Nap says Ice Climbers. The slingshot move from Smash Bros. would be a lot of fun and a platformer, especially in Cup. Yeah, I think Ice Climbers is a really interesting answer. I think it is interesting they haven't done anything with that series since, right. like, basically, like, when they put they put them in Smash pretty early, too. Like, that was a big thing. Like, they've got in at Melee, and they've only ever had that one game. Yeah, and uh, it, right. it, 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 the thing is, like, when people do ask for a game like Kid Icarus, even that doesn't necessarily sell great. So it's like, no one's asking for Ice Climbers. Are they going to really do it? I sure. Don't know. If they do make a new Ice Climbers, it's hard to imagine they're going to go big and make it a 3D platformer. But we're not right. talking about practicality here. Just what we would like to see. Yep. Revit says, I would like to see a 3D platformer of StarCraft 64. Alternatively, does Ninja Gaiden <laughs> count? Uh, I mean, sure. I guess it could count, but we had 3D Ninja, Ninja Gaiden worked pretty well as an action game, maybe less as a platformer. I tell you what, we almost got a Star Fox or StarCraft action game, so a 3D platform maybe wouldn't be too ridiculous. You'd be just playing as a Zergling the entire time. <laughs> Epic Turbo World says, don't be a coward, Nintendo. Give the Wah Brothers their own 3D platformer. That's an interesting question, Jeff. Would you want just a Waluigi game or a Wario and Waluigi game? Uh, I would like both. I like both a lot. So I, I like the idea of both together. Um I I want to see what their dynamic is like, and uh, yeah, you can kind of make it like um, maybe a little bit like Donkey Kong Country, maybe where you like you're swapping between the, the two of them, and they feel slightly different or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, why not have them run together? That'd be cool. You should just both control like Linky Kong, actually. <laughs> yeah, or, or, or um or Weird Mario from uh, uh, Super Mario Maker. Oh right, yes, the the creepy skinny one. I don't, we don't like. God, I love him. I love him. Matt Rare Donkey says, I mean, does it have to be Nintendo specific? But the answer is good old Bubsy. <laughs> <laughs> we need more Bubsy, specifically Bubsy, like Bubsy 3D uh, dot com, a.k.a. Bubsy 3D, Bubby Visits, the James Turhole Retrospective. I feel that is one of the best games experiences out there, and everyone should try it. And if that is not much, if that's too much, not Nintendo, a Drill Dozer 3D game would be pretty cool. What is Bubsy 3D dot com? Not, is this oh, isn't actually Bubsy 3D? No, no, no. It's like a, a 3D nightmare museum. Uh, with, you should just go there and play it. Honestly, it's oh, great. No great i owned oh. bubsy 3d as a kid if you can believe it i can it's believe it good. looking at you i can believe it i bought that but not the bouncer <laughs> uh velocity prime one says the single player modes in splatoon are terrific and kind of hit on what nintendo could accomplish with mario sunshine so i would like to see a full game of splatting and jumping with insane music like i hear you but again like the splatoon games already they, they, like, they do that just fine and give you a great multiplayer mode so i feel like i'm already getting what i need there I'm getting the juice without the squeeze, right? And uh, and that that really works for that one. Yes, because there's so much juice in Splatoon. Yes, Splatoon juice. Yeah. Yeah. Newfi Turbo says, "I would like to see, or I'd love to see Nintendo take a stab at another Donkey uh, game 3D platformer. Why not an open world Donkey Kong set on his island where you can explore, solve puzzles, and many other things? There is potential, right? Yeah, I do think there would be potential for a new Donkey Kong 3D platformer that." 
isn't Donkey Kong 64. Yes, agreed. Diff- well, anything but Donkey Kong 64. It's kind of where I, I'm at with that. I'm kind of I ho- I hope that one comes to NSO pretty soon because I it has been so long. I feel like I've been dunking or donkeying on that game so much lately. <laughs> right, that's, that, as I feel they like say. I need to- I need to play it again to justify all of my... my You'll be able to part. justify it very quickly. It is... Yeah. Uh, I think it's miserable. It's miserable to play. That's exciting. Actually, over, That's actually, exciting. I actually, I actually overwrote Nick Turbo's one here. I'm sure he's going to be understanding about that, but I'll, <laughs> I'll find it after I get through the other ones. Remind me. BG, smiley face, is thinking of a 3D platformer in the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon world. You could uh, tag team up on levels with an elemental partner that can help you access different areas. Would make for some sweet co-op times as well. So cameo. It'll be cameo, right? Right. Here you go. Yes. Yeah. Pokemon would be interesting because you could be all sorts of characters. You could be Vaporeon and just be really sexy. Or you could be Pikachu and shoot electricity. Right. The two options in Pokemon. Yeah. (laughs) Two options. (laughs) Reese Elliott says a 3D platformer where we play as the vitality sensor. Bring it back. Love it. You play as the vitality sensor. Your goal is to get on people's fingers and, and see how what their pulse is like, I guess. <laughs> Brian says, kind of a weird option. Oh, nothing is too weird today, apparently. Uh, but <laughs> hear me out. Paper Mario. Something very close to this was made in Super Paper Mario. In the previous games, gave Mario different paper-based movement powers, like becoming a paper plane, fitting the tight areas, etc., Nintendo has slowly been removing the unique party members in actual RPG combat anyways. Let's just remove all pretense of honoring the legacy of Paper Mario right. games and maybe get an interesting platformer out of it with weird humor and writing. Let's complete the desecration of Paper Mario. Let's do it. Let's do the desecration. <laughs> uh, Redfall says, obvious cheating answer. Golden Sun has a decent amount of auto-platforming. Uh... Would would like a new 3D game of that series? Yeah, sure. Whatever it takes to get uh, Golden Sun, huh? Turby Giggy sixty four says would never do it, but how wild would a 3D version of Gyro might be with a companion Rob controller? A Rob 3D platformer could be kind of endearing, actually. Mm-hmm. VJ Incoming says, I remember several years ago when Polygon unearthed that story that former Metroid Prime devs were making basically Metroid Prime but with Mega Man X. Nintendo should fund that to be brought back. Yeah, I know, I've seen the prototypes of that, and I think I'm okay. I don't like its vibe. Its aesthetic is weird. I don't like it. It doesn't look like... I, I understand they're doing their own thing. It's one of those ones where, like, Mega Man... It, 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 it reminds me of Bomberman Act Zero. I'll just say it. That's not the vibe Ooh. I want from Mega yes, Man. Yes, that's bad. I've never seen this. I'll have to look it up. Yeah, I mean, it looks like it might play well, but... Uh, the Longest Beard says Wario Land 3D, Nintendo's version of a GTA style open world. Yeah, that'd be pretty <laughs> That's fun. fun. I like that. Yeah. So like we like we had Wario World a long time ago, which somehow, despite being made by Treasure, it was only okay. Yeah. So it would be cool if they could make like a Wario Land a 3D Wario game where you drive around in his low rider. That would right. be pretty Right. And fantastic. it's it's just it's just like drug wars on your calculator. You're like it's buying like your calculator. you're buying garlic at a low price in one spot and selling it somewhere at a high price. I, yes. Wow. I love this. Gerber says, Duck Hunt, the classic gameplay of the original, might not transfer over that well to a 3D platformer, so why not make the Duck Hunt into a shameless ripoff of Ape Escape? You play as Duck Hunt Dog, traveling to various ducked-up environments and try to foil the evil machinations of a scientist who has gone quackers. Final boss, horse-sized duck, naturally. I'm convinced. (laughs) I like this idea. This is good. Man, too bad we're not going to get a new Ape Escape. That would be fun. Man, they should just make a duck hunt game that isn't about a light gun. They should just do it. Mm -hmm. Ron Robo just says, I say this for every question, but I would love to see Adventure Island come back as a 3D platformer. It would also be real weird. What about a 3D Star Tropics? I like the Adventure Island idea, actually. Because Star Tropics in 3D would just be like a Zelda game. Mm -hmm. But Adventure Island could, could focus on platforming. Nintendo Bro says, I'd love to see Nintendo make a punch out 3D platformer. With little Max inclusion of Smash Brothers, it could make a lot of sense to expand the franchise into the 3D space. It would be a platformer beat em up, and you can make boss fights against all the boxing opponents from the series that feel like a Nintendo made Dark Souls. Yeah, I think it'd probably be <laughs> yeah. more of an action game than a platformer. Like, like uh, little Max's whole shtick in Smash Brothers is that his all of his jumping stuff is terrible. So, I like it though. I like the idea. Ico says, arms should definitely get a 3D platformer. The mechanics of launch range grapples and curved punches seem great for puzzles. Swinging around like some kind of man spider would be quick and intuitive. And the characters are stylish and very enough to have an exciting world built that's just as weird as they are. Yeah, actually, I think arms actually would be better as some kind of, like, 
single player game, like a brawler or, or platformer, than as a one on one fighting game. Actually, when you play yeah. that, that makes some sense. Jeff, that is it for the answers. Do you have some more super chats while I look for Nick Turbo's response so he doesn't yell at me? I do indeed. First, from BV. No questions. Just saying thanks for helping me get through the end of work today. No problem, BV. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for the super chat. We really appreciate it. Thank you. From Infernal Tim 1. Not Infernal Tim 2. I think I speak for everyone when I ask, what the fuck, guys? But I love you. I love (laughs) But I love you both. Like, Tim, we are not responsible here other than for repeatedly talking about how sexual Vaporeon is. To be clear, I said that it was a bad thing. <laughs> and that's uh, somehow the people, I, they that turned into people talking about me and my sex life and breeding and I don't know. Am I sexual? From Don Otaku. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if this technically counts, but I think a Peach game with similar mechanics to Super Princess Peach, but as a 3D platformer, would be great. Yeah, they probably wouldn't want to make it about how a woman a woman's powers and her ability to cry a lot, but I get what you're saying. And actually I think that game actually has some neat ideas. Uh and they should figure out how to do that totally. Yeah, um Yeah, it's kind of fucked up they only made one peach game, huh? Yeah, absolutely. I would like to see uh this yeah, absolutely. They should be doing more of those. I showed them to my 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 girls and they were both very excited. I'm like and this is the only one, so there you go. Uh, that uh, that catches us up. Uh, do you have the Nick Turbo response? I do, and he said he said Yoshi. I want a 3D Yoshi Exploshi, so that's good. And then uh, Turbo Octo actually said right before we got started here, does Blues Brothers count? They deserve better. Both as <laughs> both have a movie, the sequel, and as games. Yeah, there's that awful Blues Brothers yep. 2000 thing. I saw Radu said I missed his, and I'm looking for it. And I I do we just not keep see. we just keep missing Radu stuff. We keep, everywhere. Yeah, we're, we're we're doing Radu dirty, but I also just don't see it in the 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 podcast the the place where these things go now that Turbo Sean is set up so I'm worried maybe he put it somewhere else and I don't know where so I am sorry Radu if that is well uh, well yeah we'll, we'll get if to you want to type in chat right now I'll just read it yeah but, there you uh, go no you probably wrote out this long thing from, but from Jacques Sabah would love to hear your thoughts on Mega oh, Man he's Octo so I found him okay good never mind we're good then he's the oh Turbo. yeah Octo he's, he's, he he is the Blues Brothers guys we're good oh, okay sorry. okay cool yeah. Uh, Jacques Sabah asks, uh, would love to hear your thoughts on Mega Man and Metroid Cross. How would, uh, how would you imagine that game? I love your content and the community. This is the one we, we, we is that what we were just talking about? Well, I think he's just thinking like, what would you think about a game that combined? Okay. The two? I mean, it's, when Metroid Prime came out, the first thing I thought of was this is a way forward to make a 3D yeah. Mega Man game. Uh, and I, you know, that Mega Man X thing was going to kind of be in that direction. But aesthetically, I, I didn't like its vibe. I think it was the right idea. It's hard because, I mean, the closest thing we really have to a 3D platformer Mega Man is Ratchet & Clank. Because Mega Man's whole right. thing is half shooting, half platforming. Not ReCore? Not ReCore. I mean, ReCore's close. I, ReCore got remastered pretty nicely, like, eventually. I, and I heard it's a lot better now. So someday, maybe I'll go back to ReCore. Probably not. Probably not a very high priority. Uh, from another one from Don Otaku, uh, but Famicom Detective Club 3D platformer though. That's a, that's an idea. Yeah. Well, I, I can only think of Phoenix Wright as a 3D platformer because Phoenix Wright is just like Famicom Detective, but better. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. Jay Stone McLovin's got one. 3D Mario in Super Mario Brothers 2 universe. Uh, <laughs> That'd yeah. be good. That would I, be good. I, I well, really think more about picking up yeah. and throwing things again. That yep. and Rachel, you missed nothing. Never listen to this episode. Please don't listen to this episode. People, yeah, it's not my fault. Yeah, we are not at we are not at fault. We're, I think we might be setting the tone a little bit, and people might be following our lead. And for that, we apologize. But it's not our fault still because we're not in control of ourselves. Uh, Mike, I think I think we are caught up on super chats once again. Awesome, awesome, Jeff. Have you been playing any Nintendo games this week? No, nah, still all Elden Ring. Oh, yeah. Ring. Yeah, that's kind of how it you. is. I, I want to get it finished. I'm like, uh, I yeah. could tell that I'm going to be able to finish it if I stick with it. It is following a very similar pattern to Breath of the Wild in terms of how I'm playing it, where it's like it came out, came out in the first quarter of the year. It's all I'm playing. It's like March again. I'm playing. It's all I'm playing. Uh, it's on this new handheld device I just got. I'm playing it everywhere in bed, everywhere. That's uh, like I can't stop and I don't want to stop. And I'm about 100 hours in. I'm probably going to be like 150 when I finally get around to like rolling credits or whatever I, it is. I still is. can't believe you're just playing that game portably. <laughs> I know. And it's and it's fantastic. It's, it runs really great on there. So, yeah. Uh, 
I, it, it is making me like it is giving me like sort of like flashbacks to that Breath of the Wild playing Breath of the Wild this way though, and so I'm like, yeah, I'm, this is kind of the first game since then that has really sort of taken me over, and uh, that to me is like the sign more than anything else that I I really do love this game. I think it's really great. So, yeah, um, I, I you know beyond that, I'm very much looking forward to Kirby. I want to I want to go spend some time playing a lot of F Zero X. Uh, um, I'll I'll find some time for that. Um, but yeah, that's not a it's not something I've done yet. I, you know, we should probably just make a game night. Probably get a, a small crew together and sure. play some F-Zero X. I would like to do that. Yeah. So I, I beat Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. So that oh, was good. great. Yeah. First time I actually beat that one. Yeah. I like the, the final, like, dungeon with, like, the boss rush of all the different Koopalings was a lot of fun. Yeah, that, that, game's, that game's still just fantastic. There's the one, like, pin or whatever it is that just increases your attack power on how, based on how many mushrooms you have. And like you get halfway through the game. It's like, I guess I'll just keep this because I'm just very strong. In fact, I, I, Jeff, I never put, I never leveled up a single other stat than strength. Really? And it's great because in that game you can because, like, you don't really need the defense and HP ones because you could just avoid every attack. Right, you yes. Just every, get good. Yes. You could just jump over. Yeah. Yes, get yeah. good and avoid every attack. Yeah. yeah. The only time it was hard was the final fight against Bow, like, the Crackletta inside of Bowser's, like, right. like stomach because, uh, she, like, she has, like, that one attack where she, like, spins her arms around and sometimes mm -hmm. they're up and sometimes they're down it's kind of hard to tell and and that would be rough but yeah i beat it and i had a, a great time and i'm glad i was able to finally get that one off of the pile of shame felt good yeah that's awesome uh mm -hmm. i uh and you, you again you were playing the original version on analog pocket right yes. yeah. and i uh i know you were like a little less like uh sure about if the analog pocket is like the best for game boy Advance games but i Maybe because I have like less of these devices. Than you, I love playing Game Boy Advance games on it. Works yeah, really I, I really think well of it if if you like, you just sort of like put all like those are concerns. If like right, if you like want the exact perfect thing, but that's not to say that it's bad at it at all. It's great at playing Game Boy Advance games, and it, I mean that screen is so good. Of course it is. Then uh, you know, I was at my friend's house on Sunday because he was kind of doing a St. Patrick's Day thing then because there's a parade that they do in town. So his family uh, came over, and I usually hang out with them. And we actually ended up playing a lot of Street Fighter Three Third Strike because he has that um, Street Fighter Fantastic. collection on Switch. Yeah. yeah, Third Strike is is incredible. It's pro. It, I think it's probably the best like two D fighting game. That's like not like in the Smash Bros. Yes. Stuff. Like I like Mar Marvel's Capcom Two more. Marvel's Capcom Two is also unbalanced and like you know, uh, it's a lot. Street Fighter Three is very pure. It's it's simple but complex. Uh, like it makes me realize how I have a problem with. Like, like I like the Arc System Works fighting games a lot, but they are they have a lot of mechanics, almost too much sometimes. And I like how Street Fighter Three is like, no, there's like some moves and there are some combos, but it's ultimately not a whole ton that you need to do to get that working. What you got there, Jeff? Yeah, you go go get the eight bit dough fighting stick so you can play your Switch games with a big fighting uh, stick here. I, I've I, never. I like this thing I've a lot, never actually. liked fighting sticks. I'll yeah, be honest. I, <laughs> I'm always just too much better with a control pad. Yeah, it looks I, cool though. I, I, yes, I like how I it looks like an NES Advantage. Yes, it looks whatever. great. I and it, you know it's an arcade stick. You just use it with that whatever. I actually only used it for fighting st uh, fighting games a little bit. Whenever whenever I was playing like um, arcade games on the Switch or on PC, like older ones, I was using this and I like it a lot. It, uh, it's good. There's a review of this uh, on GameSpeed.com as well, everybody. I thought our mod Christian would be proud of me for liking Third Strike. Uh, Turbo Sean is apparently Christian has problems with Third Strike. I thought everyone adored Third Strike. Third Strike's so good. It's easily my favorite Street Fighter. There's it's like no competition. He says it's full of BS. Like what BS? I mean, I'm sure it's uh, th eh, really. I don't know. Like maybe, maybe at the top tier. He's a double level. impact guy. He loves double impact. No one likes double impact. It is funny <laughs> how this collection like has double impact. Like, does anybody mm -hmm. like want to play like double impact? Uh, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. And then, so I, I don't want to start anything like super big on the Switch before Kirby comes Kirby. out. Uh, I, I want to play Earthbound, and I'm thinking about doing that soon. And I'm thinking about even maybe streaming it because again, I played through the first five hours of that game a zillion times. So anything, right? To... That's a good idea. Just stream it so we can like help you get through it and like kind of yeah. keep you committed. But before Kirby comes out, I don't want to like start that yet. Uh, but I was actually I I started to play through Donkey Kong Country three because I played one and two, so I've just been jumping back into that. And I talked about this before, Jeff. I used to be one of those like uh, Donkey Kong Country's overrated people. That was I was just wrong. Con the Donkey Kong Country games yep. are great. Even three, which everybody like knows is the worst one, and was made by like the rare B team. It is still very good. I like those games a lot. Uh, from from Chaos Hunter Jack, have you ever played Cadillacs and Dinosaurs by Capcom? I haven't, and I really want to. Jeff, this is one of their yeah, uh, beat em ups, inspired by this 
co- uh, this comic slash short lived cartoon Whoa. show, which is what it sounds like. It's about Cadillacs and dinosaurs, <laughs> uh, and that makes for a, a fantastic beat em Sega up. CD the- is what else was it on? It was arcade, I think. I yeah. don't. I, it wasn't. It, it, I don't think it's gotten many home console ports even. Yeah, this like, could just be a fan in, thing. It was not in that Capcom beat em up collection, I don't think, unfortunately. Probably because there is a license involved with it. Like, again, right. There is, that is a thing. Uh, but I really do want to want to play that one sometime. It looks like it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll get that on the Steam Deck and maybe play through it a little bit and then maybe stream some of it. We'll see. Come for me, Cadillac. I don't care. Yeah, so, um, okay, so apparently, Third Strike is hilariously unbalanced. So is Smart vs. Capcom 3, though. Like, I. So is Melee. A lot of my favorite fighting games that are makes incredibly it, that makes it, Yeah, that makes it more fun for, like, normal people, for sure. It does, so. Yeah, it doesn't really... Then, like, even at the high end, then the people just played the good characters anyway, so, you know, whatever. Uh, all right, Jeff, but that's that's what I've been up to, and I think that's just about there. Oh, next week's topic. So we talked about the Cowbunga Collection. What other retro series would you like to see get a compilation on Switch, a la the Cowabunga Collection? Very so good. That should be fun. But yes, you can find more of us on uh, Games Beat the Size on Friday. You can find me on to- uh, Twitter at Tokoto, T-O-L-K-O-T-O. Jeff. Uh, yeah, this uh, this Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, we will be playing Mario Kart 8 with the new DLC. Mm. So uh, we've been doing Mario Kart mornings every Saturday for months now, right? Like for the last few months. Uh, the new DLC will be out if you have the expansion pass as part of your Nintendo Switch Online subscription. You will just have that DLC. Just make sure you're up to date. Hop on. Uh, look for the, the Game Mess Tournament. Just go to Tournament. I, at least we think that's how it's going to work. We have not seen like how they're going to actually integrate these, these tracks into the game. So come hang out with us, everybody. Bye. Yeah, I might even get up. Don't breathe me. <laughs>